Hey everybody, welcome back here to Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm Tanning Grace. We got Andy over here in the booth with me. We're going to bring you some more matches from the semifinals here today. And we're going to have <laughs> New Zealand's favorite son. We're going to have Matt Rogers against uh, Michael, the old him player, one of the two old him players here in the top eight. And I got to say this, I am a little worried about Matt being able to push through enough damage here, but he does have some of the tools that we've seen that have been able to do enough damage across the turns to get through Oldham. The problem is, is like we've been seeing Oldham actually since last week kind of cement itself as possibly one of the best draft strategies to do in the set. Absolutely, Tana. And we did see a bunch of Matt's draft. Unfortunately, we got cut off, but we at the end, we do see there are four total Briar drafters at this table, which I know Matt is probably not too happy to see, including Tarek, who is directly next to him. So I think going into this matchup, Tarek's going to try and, I mean, uh, Matt yeah. is going to try and close out this game as soon as possible. Doesn't want to get fatigued by old time from Michael here and uh, try and get it done before we get to the end game where we're going to see Hammer swinging and dominant attacks coming his way. Yeah, and speaking of Tarek as well, too, he, uh, he <laughs> afterwards I saw him walk up to Matt and he kind of apologized a little bit. He's like, I think I tanked both our drafts a little oh, bit. Oh, no. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, some stuff happened. I didn't get the full story, but he was like, yeah, you know, some stuff was open. I was, like, trying to figure some stuff out. I couldn't really cut it enough to send good signals. Yeah. You know, this happens sometimes in draft. And with there being that many prior drafters at the table, uh, it's going to happen, right? Like, this is a thing that's, that's just going to happen with the cards. They're not enough for everyone. And, you know, I was talking to Matt. He was pretty, uh, he was pretty okay with his seat. You know, he's like... It wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I think I got a decent enough deck out of where I was sitting. Yeah, absolutely. But we are about to head into the gameplay here. I'm excited to see what we're gonna what goes down and if Matt can actually get there with the arcane damage with Briar, or if Michael will be able to hold down the fort, defend all day, swing the hammer, and get to the end game where he'd like to be. Yeah, and uh, I think we're gonna take a look at the bracket really quickly uh, going in before the matchup here. Check out the standings, Tannen. Yeah, absolutely. So Tark makes his way through. Gets just continually winning in this format. I don't know if anyone can absolutely stop him, but it's going to be up to Michael here in the next round. That'll be the other match that we're going to have on you. That's going to be on our backup camera. We should be able to bring you that entire match as well. So that's going to be Lexi versus Briar. And then this is the one that we have here down at the bottom. We have Sho Fang versus Matt Rogers. Both of these games are going to be very exciting to watch, Chan, and I'm excited to get into it. And we're going to head in right now. It looks like we're ready to check out this gameplay from Michael Fang and Matt Rogers, old time versus Briar. It's going to be a good one here. Semi-finals of the draft portion of today's event. I know it says Classic Construct on the left side, but we are in limited here. This is a draft deck, so uh, it looks like Michael's going to start off the turn with the Strengths of Sequoia, making a Seismic Surge so token, which we saw a ton of those Seismic Surge tokens be played and made using the Tectonic Plating in the Bravo Standard or Classic Constructed gameplay we just, uh, me and Rob, get to talk about, so... We also, go. we're going to have an Embolden fall this up well, and that's going to draw another card for Shofang here in the first turn. This is a hell of a first turn uh, setup for an Olden player. Shrink the Sequoia is going to buff up his next attack next turn. Embolden drawing him another card. You know, not attacking Matt in any way, but he's going to get to fully utilize that hand and get an arsenal as well. Really, really good setup from him here. Absolutely. That's what you want to be doing here, turn one as well. And it's it's interesting. There's a whole build, it seems, around the idea of auras, right? There's tokens and there are non-token auras that affect the board, stay out here, and provide benefits for uh, each player, especially the old-time uh, type builds. The... the, um, the Giant Guardian heroes, they want to they want to build the, the, the deck out and play these giant attacks and get those discounts. So the Seismic Surge token isn't something that you see a ton of when it comes to uh, the limited format here, with Strengths of Sequoia especially, but it is going to benefit Michael going into the next turn for sure. And it looks like we're going to be over to Matt's turn. He's going to go ahead and line up his first attack. It does look like he's blocking just a little bit. We see two Invigorates here. Yeah, Shockwave as well in hand. Yeah. Arcane Shockwave. It looks like he's going to start off with both of those Invigorates. Matt taking a little time. I'm not used to seeing him take this much time in his place. Usually he's very, very just do this, do this, do this, you know? He's a master. He knows what he's doing. He's played this game in and out. Obviously very talented, limited player, making it here to the top eight semis. Double Invigorate here to gain the Lightning Token. Just going to set himself up for next turn, I believe. Uh, maybe see an attack here as well. Deciding what to do off the go-agains. Want to burn that embodiment of lightning token now or just arsenal and set himself up for a more powerful attack. We are going to see the Arcanic Shockwave come in. It's going to be uh, not fused. So I believe that's coming in for two damage. Physical with go again. 
see how... Pretty sedate opener for Matt here. Yeah, absolutely. See how Fink wants to defend this. Looks like it's going to be a card from hand with a mulch to get a full block here. Yeah, there's the mulch card. You're, you're happy to see leave the hand of uh, Michael if you're Matt Rogers. But, again, these old-time decks, they, they pack a punch. They got a bunch of these types of cards in their deck. So, um, you know, we'll likely see that again from Michael. Another card similar to mulch at least. It does look like he did activate... Oldham's ability as well, but there was no other damage coming. So we're going to go back over to show. See if he's got an attack this turn. It looks like the auras are going to go off. Seismic Surge token as well. Yep. Let's see if there's a big attack lined up here. Looks like there is going to be. This looks like a mulch, but it's not going to be fused. This won't be threatening Matt's arsenal, which is a, a small win for right. Matt here. He's going to be able to hold on to that arsenal if it hits. So he doesn't have to commit too many cards to protect that one. Small win, but still a hefty attack, right? Oh, this is still a really big attack. This is a red mulch. The yellow mulch. I'm sorry. The red one mulch. was in the pitch right. from earlier, but like I said, we were going to see more attacks like this, and we do. Immediately after the next turn, we see a mulch be played, um, and it is it is quite the hefty attack. Matt's got to decide how he wants to block here. Looks like he's going to choose to block out and try and take as little damage as possible. Curious what Matt's thinking going into this matchup, how he's going to try and play Briar against old time if he's going to try and get to that end game, but we are going to see the Arcanic Shockwave played for zero for four physical coming at him. Really quickly here. Yep, pretty good hand for Matt here, being able to block with three cards and still have an attack on his turn. And attacking for four, pretty important as well. Ultim, very good at stopping three. It's the, you know, the average for most of their cards that block. So this is a really good break point for Matt Rogers here. Be able to maybe get some damage through. Showing some patience in this matchup as well. Absolutely. You might see a block for three or even two, and then a defense reaction using old time here. And uh, we are going to see that the... In, um, Evergreen. Evergreen goes into the pitch, thank you. And we're going to see the defense reaction come in, block all the damage, and then attack with an entangle on the following turn. So this is just seven again. This is an aggressive old him start we've seen from Shofang. You know, usually we see these players just attack with the hammer a lot. It's hammer time, you know, as we like to call it. Uh, attack with these hammers a ton and just block, block, block. But Shofang has been able to actually cobble together a lot of attacks, you know, being able to hold back a blue card so they can pay for these big expensive attacks like this entangle this turn. So let's see if Matt wants to block a bunch yet again. He's at 16. Shofeng's still at 20. Absolutely. Yeah, the 7 attack is pretty aggressive here. I think Michael might be thinking, hey, I got these cards in hands now. I know I could be blocking more efficiently, getting to that end game like we talk about and attacking with the hammer, but why not try and take the opponent out soon, right? Why not try and force these cards out of Matt Rogers' hands and weaken the potential chain of attacks and uh, combat chain coming from the Briar hero by just Getting him out of the hand, attacking for big swings. I like it here from Michael. This is a good start for him here. So we're going like, to see a double block. A yeah, double block here from Matt. He'll stop somebody. He's going to start his turn off by pitching a Sofa tomorrow and attacking with a Burging. Now, this is a Burging from hand, but it is a red Burging. So this has got six physical damage coming towards Shofeng. So this is going to require probably two cards from hand if he wants to make sure that he doesn't take any damage here and really commit to that defensive start. All right, and both heroes, just uh, both players right now, considering just you know they're throwing these attacks out that aren't super fancy, aren't super chained together, and we might you know see more of that from Matt later, maybe even Michael as well. But this is an efficient way to use your hands. I think both players are very experienced here, and they're they're blocking and then still having something to do on their turn, which is efficient and powerful. Oh, absolutely, really good point. We saw a thump start to make its way into the block here, but I think uh, I must say it does look a double uh, thump here for the block. I thought he was rethinking it, maybe being able to attack with it plus that Cracker Jacks to give himself a really good pump the thump turn. Yep. But it does look like this is going to be an Autumn's Touch attacking from Show. So we're back over to Matt with four cards. Is he going to be doing some blocking? He's been having to do a lot of it here early. And Sho is the one that's turning this matchup on its head. He's usually the uh, Briar player that's getting in a lot of damage early and trying to get trying to get uh, you know things going. And usually the ultimate player is the one that's having to block on multiple cards. But we're seeing the the reverse. We're seeing yeah, the I think with Matt's hand, he's got a Bramble Spark here. He's also got the Fuse on the Autumn's Touch as well. So I think what he's going to look to do at this turn is maybe just block with one card. I don't know how much he's going to value his life and this de deficit here. He's at 14. Michael's at 20. So he might try and block with one and chain together a Fuse Bramble Spark into an attack into uh, a Rosetta Thorn, which is the ideal line for this deck. He also has a card in Arsenal. Don't know what that is. Cracker Jack's still there and Plume as well. So I think he might be thinking about Plume, looking at his graveyard too there. A uh, lot of decisions for Matt Rogers here. So he's going to take his time in the tank for a moment. Think about the best line and how much life he's willing to give up in going into his turn. Yeah, one of these turns soon, he's going to have to put together a big attack or this game's going to start to get away from him. So I think that's what you're seeing here is 
maybe a little resiliency on giving up too many cards blocking here. He's trying to find the right amount that he can. He's still got that arsenal, so technically we've got five cards here. But it does look like he's lining up a block, possibly that Autumn's Touch. Yeah, Autumn's Touch and Singeing Steel Blade. Okay, looks like he's going to be going to a double block. So Matt showing a real commitment to protecting his life total early here. And I don't really blame him. Uh, we've seen some really good draws so far out of Shofang. Very good four-card hands, and I've got to believe he thinks that this can't continue. This can't happen every single turn, and this is an attack that can't be blocked because it's not actually an attack. It's just the fire of a of a lightning bolt at Shofang's head. Yeah, Matt showing a lot of patience here and uh, respecting the health total differential. He's not willing to take the damage and string together what isn't ultimately going to be, I think, a pivotal turn for him. Now he's got the double Bramble Spark Invigorate in hand. And this because he's just setting himself up, I think, to kind of get there and equalize the health total as much as possible before we get to that end game we've been talking about. Rejuvenate being played here, gaining some life from Michael as well. And if that's going to be all of Michael's turn, this is perfect for Matt. He's finally going to get a turn where he's not getting assaulted. He's not going to have to give up multiple cards of his hand to protect his life toll. And he's going to get to set up a big turn with those multiple Bramble Sparks that you were talking about. This is a really good spot for Matt to be able to turn the, the game's tempo on its head. And it does look like that is a... I think that's an arsenal from Shofang? Yeah, that's an arsenal. I believe he's drawing the rest of his hand there. And yeah, while it is good, I mean, Michael is, is still at 21 health, right? So we're, we're at 14 for Matt, and he doesn't have any life to, to give up at this point. And I think you're more comfortable as the old-time player, especially with that buckler that can block. Taking some extra damage maybe on this turn if Briar's trying to chain a bunch of things together. And uh, still trying to end up in that position where you can fatigue the opponent out and get some big dominated or even just regular attacks with the hammer in later on when your opponent's running out of gas. So let's see what Matt can do. And he's going to start off with a with a Bramble Spark, Bramble Spark, a red into a blue, two arcane damage on the next attack. He's going to get the Embodiment of Lightning token, which is going to give his next attack go again because he's played two non-attack actions. Pitchy Invigorate for a Break Ground, coming in for two arcane plus seven damage on the Break Ground, which is quite good. I think the Break Ground was coming from Arsenal as well. Yeah, he's going to be pumped by both of these Bramble Sparks as well. So this is the turn that we've been looking for from Matt Rogers, and this is what he's been waiting for as well. Was he able to fuse off of the, the break grounds as well? I think he should. That's what he did, right? Yeah, I think I think he showed the break ground for both of the Bramble Sparks. I, I mean, I believe that's what happened. That's what I think was happening. It looks like Runaway is going to stop one of the arcane damages from the Bramble Spark that's going to keep an embodiment of Earth from happening here. But the... There's probably going to be at least multiple embodiment Earth sister. Let's see exactly how Shofang wants to stop all this, because this is a ton of damage. It is. So we've got plus three off the first Bramble Spark, plus one off the second Fuse Bramble Spark, then a Nat 7. So we have 11 damage we're looking at on top of the two Arcane coming in from the Bramble Sparks themselves as well. That's a lot. That's great. If you're in Matt's position, you're feeling pretty good about this attack. Yeah, this is, what, 11 physical and two uh, arcane that has been presented. The first arcane has resolved uh, getting a point of damage into Shofang. And he used the runaways to prevent the, the other one. And then this looks like the not often seen quad block here for what I believe is all of it. And then the Rosetta Thorn 2 and 2. Classic gonna, 2 and 2 finish there. Yeah, going to come into here, make another uh, a couple of damage here for Shofang. Matt's but yeah, that's the that's the turn you're talking about with Matt, where you want to see you want to see a big strung together turn. Really impressive stuff from Briar there, coming together, chaining together those Bramble Sparks, creating the the ability to gain go again off your next attack, and then ending with the Rosetta Thorn. Love to see that play, just classic line, and Matt Rogers just pilots it very very well here. It showed down a 16 though, only took about five damage that turn. Matt over to 14, but tempo is all his. That was a quad block from Show, so that was a draw four pass. For him as well. He still has got that arsenal that he's been having for quite a while, leading me to believe it's either one giant attack that he's setting up for later, something like a Glacial Footsteps, or something like a turn timber, you know, some kind of defensive measure set up for one of the giant turns. Right. Could it also just be a So Tomorrow, you know, something to draw off of your, your arsenal. Even a Polar Blast can be played that way if he was lucky enough to get one. So it's nice having that arsenal up for Michael and... We've got Matt Rogers in the tank real quick thinking about what he wants to do. We do see that blue Sigil of Solace, which we saw him draft, or uh, Sigil of Suffering, rather. It's not Solace. That is Suffering. Yeah, this is the, uh, the exact opposite. The this literal the one, opposite. Yeah. This the is the one where you react. suffer, buddy. Yeah, exactly. We're dealing damage on your opponent's turn. So I, I would assume he's going to either arsenal that or use it to pitch for resources on this turn. Going to see what we decide to do here. He's also got Stir the Wildwood and a Burgeoning in hand, so he's going to pitch... Four for stir. No fuse, so I think we're just coming in for 
How much here? Looks like just four. It's four? Yeah, there's been no arcane damage this turn, and there's been no fuse, so it looks like just a, a naked stir of the Wildwood. Yeah, a naked stir, if you will. Beautiful. Michael looking just probably to block out once here, take yeah. a little bit of damage, and then either swing with the hammer or set himself up for a big turn. I like how Michael has piloted this deck so far. It's very different from matchup to matchup. Sometimes you want to be more aggressive and swing. We are going to see the classic pump the thump, the, the arms being popped to bump up the attack on Thump and give it Dominate. Yeah, this is a Cracker Jacks uh, activation here, and I think this is one of the only times you'll see Cracker Jacks get activated from the old him players. You're almost always going to see something like Thump, or if they're trying to kill you with a Glacial Footsteps, and you get in that last little point. And this is really, really scary for Matt Rogers here. This is a giant attack with Dominate. If it hits you, you discard a card. So if yeah. you do blocking, you're going to be losing multiple cards here. This is really, really scary. And his hand... It's starting to come together to possibly put together some damage here. You know, he's got some of these powerful cards in his hand, but can he just take all this this turn and pitch a card? This is a, a important moment. question. Yeah, super pivotal moment this turn. I think Matt's got to decide how much damage he's willing to take here, and this will likely, this turn is, is might be the turning point of the match right here. Very strong attack from Michael Schwilfang over there, and we've got Sting of Sorcery, a card that we were both really excited to see uh, Matt Rogers pick up in pack two of his draft after taking some Bramble Sparks. Very powerful, potent card. Helps out with your arcane damage, which is obviously the game plan when you're on Briar here. So now he's got to make the decision what he's willing to lose and if he can recover into the next turn, deal some extra damage. Absolutely. We see seven coming through here from the stump, and it's going to represent hitting multiple cards because every card you block with, you're obviously going to lose. But if you don't block all of it, then you're going to discard another card as well. You know, Matt using four cards in his hand plus an arsenal here, so technically five cards, but you've got to believe he's going to be losing at least two to three of them this turn. Yeah. Let's see, it looks like he's setting up a block here. Looks like a break ground is going to make its way into the block. This is kind of just a brutal turn for Matt Rogers. Likely just going to lose his entire next turn. Yeah, and seven is such a hard spot, too, because like if you double block, you're almost always only getting five or six. Right. So that an attack is still getting through and you're losing yet another card. Right. So if you can't block all of it, then you only block with one card. Like well, it is dominated because yep. of the plus, plus anyway. So even if he was able to block with multiple cards, he would still be getting in because of that that seven. It's, a, it's an interesting number, right? Like seven. We talk about these numbers that make it hard to block. You're getting two cards out of hand, right? It's like four, seven. These, these numbers that make it hard for your opponent to decide what to do, how much damage they're willing to let leak through. And uh, we're just going to see an icy encounter come over from uh, Schwilfang over there. Yeah, big attack here from a snow under. Oh, sorry, snow under. Thank you. Yeah, Dawn they look they look so similar with they, the glare. Yeah. They do. So there's not there's no fusion, I don't believe. So there there isn't the threat of a frostbite token on hit, but it is a red uh, snow under. So I believe this is coming in for six. Matt with a sigil of suffering in his hand, a good card to block with. He gets a damage in here as well, but he's got to start thinking about it. You know. How low can he go here? Because he's already getting into the, the scary spot where, you know, if you get too low, if you get down to the 5, 6 range, a dominated Glacial Footsteps can end the game very quickly. That's where he's going to go. He's in the 4 range now. Did deal 1 arcane damage to Shuo Feng there and block a couple of the damage. But I think he's just willing to go down to 4, try and get in some more damage here. Trying to make it to the end of this match. Yeah, he's got actually got to find a spot where he can get in damage here because he needs embodiment of Earth tokens. Because if something does start to get attacked, you know, if another, you know, thump comes in with being pumped or whatever, he can maybe block of one card and survive because of the embodiment of Earth tokens that he can start to generate. Uh, it's very important that he actually starts to get some offense here because he needs to start threatening that life total of show things. Well, this is a good start a card to get started with. Electrify from the Arsenal is going to draw an extra card here. He's going to look to chain together some attacks after this Electrify, giving him a go again. So hopefully looking to uh, chain some stuff together and end with a Rosetta Thorn if possible. So looking to get go again on this next attack. Cracker Jacks might come in here and try and push some more damage, equalize these health totals a little bit. Not sure when Matt's going to pop those. A little awkward off of a uh, Briar player to play Cracker Jacks. Obviously we've seen the best use of it from Shuo Fang, um, popping it for the pump, the thump. Looking to looking to think about the, the graveyard here, so potentially so tomorrow in hand. Thinking about what he wants to get back. If he's able to chain together some cards, um, create an embodiment of lightning token, and then go wide again. So thinking about that, I think. Really good. Uh, look at the graveyard. Know what you got going on. What you're missing in the deck, and what you're potentially looking to line up in the end game. Yep, exactly. Good call here. It does look like this is going to be a so from tomorrow. 
or so tomorrow. Yeah, they're so tomorrow. We're going to get the embodiment of lightning token. So next attack is going to gain go again from Matt Rogers. Wasn't from Arsenal, so he's not going to draw. But we are going to see a Rosetta Thorn come in. Unfortunately, not the attack that Matt wants to be making, I'm sure. But I don't know if he had anything else in hand. We just see two Bramble Sparks there. So likely just going to Arsenal one of those, draw up, and hope to be able to block out and not get dominated on. Yeah, hope to survive this turn actually coming back. That's going to be the big thing here. So these Bramble Sparks can possibly set up a huge turn next turn. But is Matt Rogers going to have a next turn? That's the hard part here because he's not presenting enough attack for Sho to even really worry about. In fact, if Sho has a good hand here, a hand that can be pitched to big enough resources to make a big attack, there's a chance either... He might just ignore this two damage, but it does look like he is going to make uh, some kind of like. Oh, there's like a, a biting gale. gale. Yeah, yeah, this is a great defense reaction. Used as well, so this is really bad for Matt. Now he's going to lose that bramble spark from his hands. That's quite brutal. So he's going to choose to pay for it, keep some recursion in his deck, pay two instead of discarding a card. Yeah. Also, he's going to activate uh, Olden's ability with with ice ability. So both those bramble sparks, one having to be pitched, one goes to the top of the deck. So yeah, horrible news for Matt Rogers here now. Yeah, pretty brutal for Matt, and I think uh, Schwo is just thinking, how can I end this game? And you know what? Honestly, he doesn't really have to think so hard because he's just going to swing the hammer for four here, and just that's presenting lethal on Matt at this point, so he's got to figure out how he needs to block. Sigil is suffering in his hand again, though, so we'll likely see some arcane damage be used. Yep, Matt is in check here is what we like to call, so every attack pretty much. I don't know if Sho has an attack left in his deck that doesn't present lethal for Matt Rogers anymore this game, so Matt's going to have to be doing a lot of blocking and a lot of attacking. His deck is getting really thin at this point. His back is definitely against the wall here to see if he can find a way to claw his way out of this. Yeah, especially with the hammer coming in, right? You don't even need a card in your deck. You just need to pitch a blue and get in there. Yeah, it looks like five cards left in Matt's deck, and he's trying to figure that out. Like, how much can I actually afford to block with here because I lose that card? And then I'm going to lose my ability to, to deal damage. So we seeing... got fatigued quite quickly, Matt. Yeah, I mean, drew a lot of extra cards this game. Drew a lot of his filler, no thriller, in a lot of these uh, a lot of these turns where you know kind of spun his wheels, did a few things, and then didn't really get to have that big attack. That was all you know, like to get about the double invigorate turns, not getting enough through the double bramber spark turns, not getting enough through, and that's just what happens when you play against Oldham sometimes with these really good decks. And it looks like we're going to have a block and a sigil of suffering here to put Show down to 11. A full block there, and uh, deal one to Shuo. We're going to see Rice of Replenishment pitched to just attack with a Rosetta Thorn. Uh, I think Matt Rogers got to see the writing on the wall yeah. here. His deck's getting thin, and Shuo is feeling good where he's at right now. Ooh. Must feel insane for him. I think I saw an icy encounter in Shuo's hand to see what color it is, but if it's one of the bigger ones, like if it's a red one and he's got a way to make it have Dominate here, this might be the last turn for Matt Rogers. Looks like a block from an avalanche that's so going to block three. Going to draw the rest of his deck. Yeah, show's going to take no damage here. got one card left. Let's see. Arsenal. All right, so it's Glacial Footsteps into... Glacial into Avalanche. This into is like Icy a, Encounter. Yeah, it's another Snow Under here. Another uh, seven power attack. Uh, just trying to draw more cards out of Matt's hand. He could have... Act... Glacial for a little bit more power, but I think setting up for next turn with the emerging uh, is pretty good idea for Michael there. He's utilizing all of his resources and setting himself up to burn Matt out and have him have no cards left in the deck. Now, this is an attack for seven that's going to require multiple cards from Matt. So this is still a really good attack from Shofang, and it's going to put Matt into a situation where I, I don't know if he has the reach anymore in his deck to no. actually deal 11 damage. I think even if Show wasn't wasn't blocking. It's going to be hard for for Matt to find enough damage here. And you can kind of see it in his body language. He's kind of resigned to his fate here. Give, yeah. He's going to give himself another draw here with a double block from Heaven's Claws and a Bramble Spark. It's going to take a little bit of damage here. I believe it's going to be two. Threatening's on the wall for Matt Rogers here. He's drawing just the last cards in his deck. Not much else to do on his turn here. Bodying, bodyman of Lightning to Token should be gone, I believe, here. But we are going to see the Bramble Spark of sorcery stir the wildwood so we're going to get the arcane damage buff on there which is going to be a plus two. Oh, he's going to do the cracker jacks as well so bringing that back he's going to get, grab yeah. the cracker jacks he's got go again he's got one floating resource so he can attack with the rosetta thorn but at this point in the game he's at two and uh he's not going to be able to um, i don't think he's going to be able to close out the game here well this is actually a really good turn for matt as well you gotta you gotta give him some points about finding a line that kept him alive plus presents a turn that could possibly do a ton of damage. But I think we're going to see here Shofeng just make sure that 
doesn't take anywhere near lethal this turn and set up possibly be able to kill him. And if he can't do that, he's just going to block everything he pops. I think Chove's going to just throw all of his cards right. at Matt from here on out because Matt is pretty much done. We're going to see the Fuse turn Timber and the Buckler there to prevent, I think, all that damage as well. Rosetta Thorn coming in for two and two. And then Matt's left with three cards left in his library. And I think Schwo is going to be able to close this one out. Matt does have the embodiment of Earth Token. I don't think it matters much at this point. It looks like Show's going to go ahead and use So tomorrow through the Oldham defense reaction to prevent yep. some of the damage there. He's going to go down to 10, but that's not going to be enough. It looks like we're just going to go ahead and attack with the last card from our hand to make the hammer come across for four. Matt's got three cards left in his hand. I don't think he's going to be able to do this. Looks like this is going to be the end of the road here at the calling for Matt Rogers. What a great showing for him. Top four here. You know he's going to be disappointed with this finish, but I think after a few days he'll be a little better off with it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to be funny for him to talk to his teammate Tarek there and, and think about how that draft went in hindsight with your buddy next to you drafting Briar at the same time. The handshake there, and Matt Rogers is uh, out of the top eight here. We do have Shuo Fang. Congratulations on making it to the finals here. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? It looks like we might be having an old him run around here for these last two events. It won... The tournament in Dallas-Fort Worth is now in the finals here in Cincinnati, and I think we've been shown the true power of old him in these last two events. I think we didn't really understand the right way to be drafting it when the set first came out or to build the, build the sealed decks, but now with Nam Vo winning, with Sho Fang possibly winning this week as well, I think we've been shown the blueprint of how to get it done because it has just such a good matchup versus Lexi, and it seems to have enough to compete with Briar that we've been seeing some really good results from those. We're actually going to take a really, really quick break. We'll be back in just a few minutes with the other semifinals, so we'll see who he's going to be playing against in the finals. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Flesh and Blood.